Hey guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound. It's another of our video calls where we've been chatting to everybody while we're all at home at the minute. I am delighted to say from Yumi at six, we have Josh on the line. How are you, mate? Good, man. How are you getting on? Not too bad. Surviving, surviving as ever in this rather strange time we're all in. And I will start that in the way we've started every single one of these, which is to say, of course, I hope you, the lads, all your loved ones, you're all keeping safe and well. And yeah. how has these last few months been for you, man? How have you been occupying your time? Yes, yeah, so I think um, same same goes to you and the Roxanne family. Um, of course, goes out saying. Um, at the start, it was like I, th- I kind of felt like I was in Truman Show and that everything was really funny. Uh, and I was like Zoom calling mates till like eight o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday because that's what people were just doing. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it's just just stupid stuff like that. Just like getting drunk all the time. Um, and then I was like, oh, this doesn't seem to be... Because at one point, it was like, I think, mid-April, and none of our shows were getting pulled. None of our festivals were getting pulled. And like, obviously, you know, people were passing away um, from COVID, which is obviously awful, but it, it didn't yet feel like it hit its stride, if that makes sense. So I, the, the level of seriousness wasn't quite sort of there and uh as that went on i was like okay no this isn't just like a two or three weeks in your house sort of thing this is really turning into something a bit crazier um so i think the main thing that I really concentrated on and i made um like i spoke to a lot to my friends about uh and my family obviously was trying to maintain my mental fitness as as i mean if the physical fitness goes whatever you can you know you can run off those beers at some point but like just trying to keep my brain active in a healthy capacity, uh, reading, um, walking and like, I'd go on like walks, like they were going out of fashion, you know, like every day just to be out, especially when you're allowed to start going outside, just trying to find somewhere to sort of sit up and read and take the dog out and that. So yeah, um, at one point there was like uh, Jordan Fish, put together a really jokes uh, like FIFA league. And there was just so many people from all over the world, just piling into this. We called it, it was called like the COVID cup and like it had other names, but um, that was <laughs> a solid title. That's a solid title. It's if you're going to go for it, right? It's great. And like, just sort of, you know, that was nice. Cause I think every, all of our mates and bands are all feeling the same. Like, oh no, you know, like what's life without the studio or the stage sort of thing. So to have that, still that sort of camaraderie was nice. Um, because everybody was like-minded, everybody got it, right? You know, versus trying to explain to, you know, your friends or your partner that are still working from home that like, well, working from home for you is very different from working home for me uh, or for us in that case. So yeah, it was good. It was nicer to have that. And I think just as I said, you know, dude, the the start, the front end of it, like primarily just wanted to get through it and still now like just want to get through it. So just, you know, started writing a journal which i haven't done ever in my life um and just started just threw myself into music so yeah got through it and feeling good good glad to hear it man it's interesting you say about a sense of community though because that is so so true from the biggest bands in the world right down to newcomers everyone's in exactly the same boat right now man there's no shows there's no shows exactly no one's at any any more or less an advantage i mean i guess like if you've got you know, a big space or where you've got a recording studio, a control room, you can, you know, but I mean, the amount of songs that um, we've made, even when we were in Thailand, we made it in a bedroom, you know, like it, anything, you can do anything, achieve anything if you want to. So, uh, yeah, we're all in it together. And I think that's, um, you know, minus the government, they're not really that us how we're all getting on. Uh, but, you know, it, it, it's been nice to see that there is that, scene if that makes sense across the board and not just you know in, just in terms of like rock music but i think in music all levels of it whether it be as you say grassroots right to staging max you know like we're all in the same situation and we all miss being around our fans and performing in front of an audience and having that connection having that dopamine rush and uh yeah it's um it's tough but it doesn't even compare to what you know people on the on the front line or the key workers have, have gone through during this time so there's always you've always got a perspective like it sucks but it it's it's um we're still in a position where you know we're better off so 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, now, well said, and something to definitely remember that you know the shows will come back and everything, and it could be worse. Yeah, when they're going to fucking be sick, mate. When oh. the first gig, I'm going to every show every night of the week just to witness it. It's going to be amazing. So, so to look forward to. Yeah, it's going to be outrageous. Looking forward to that whenever that should come. And in the meantime as well, it's great that there's certain aspects of your job you can continue. Let's get into this album. And I think I'm allowed yeah. to say this. I have now heard the album. Okay. <sighs> mate, mate. When we chatted last summer, you said to me in one of these interviews that uh, it was the heaviest thing you've done since Sinners. Oh my God, you weren't lying. This is great, this record, man. I really, really love it. I'll get that out of the way, first of all. But it is... And it's heavy. It's so good. Talk to me about that approach and what these influences were. Why did you decide this time around, you know what, let's go heavier than arguably than you've ever gone before in a couple of places on this? Yeah, I think, um, I don't know. I think Thailand was sort of like our musical rehab. I think there was a few of us that were going through our own like trauma, if that makes sense. Um, and we needed to, we used that trip as like a vehicle for escapism, you know, just to get out of our own little world and unplug. And when we were there, you know, just felt very at peace with what was going on um, and very focused. And like, I think, you know, for whatever reason, I can't, I, I may, I'll never be able to explain to you why this is the way with me at six, but whenever either individually or collectively we're in a bad place, we make our best music. And I don't get it. It's almost like my personal life needs to be in tatters to be any good at what I do. Right, okay. Uh, and yeah, I, and I, I don't get it. But um, I think, you know, VI, our last record was, you know, people were just too fucking happy. They were in a good place. Um, and so, you know, you take that away and the thing that you're in love with is the music, right? And, and that's what you focus on. So I don't know why... Um, it's a bit so we didn't sit out and go right we've got to have um, you know five or six of the songs feel fucking big and, and heavy and rocky and whatever that wasn't really like there was no blueprint you know there wasn't like a master plan just things came together that way and on the same same side you know there's some songs in this record which you've never heard you meet six in this way ever and I think that's really exciting like a song like what you're doing right now where it's just like is that hip hop is that rock music I don't or is it electro or is it fucking whatever um you know there's so many I've, there's so many things stories I could tell you about making that record and where in the world we made it before we got to Thailand but yeah I'll, I'll, I'll let you lead that one but I'm yeah, right. glad, glad you like it oh mate no I, I was really really impressed genuinely and like you say that is the kind of interesting thing is yeah it's a heavy record it is big but even as people can hear on the stuff that's already out there there's dance beats in the back there. There's experimentation with different types of sounds like I've not heard you guys do before, but still sounding very much like you guys, which is no mean feat. Um, mm. Talk to me about some of the kind of influences in there because yeah, it's something you, I guess, have been building for a while with What's It Like as well, which is of course on the record, that dance influence in there. Where did that come from? Wanting to play with these new kind of production styles in there too? Um, honestly, Dan, Dan Flint, uh, it's, it, you know, he's, he just he lives on a different planet in in the best way possible um he just he is like whereas like i'm really like ingrained in like the rock scene if that makes sense like i'm I'm always paying attention to what who's coming up what's going on whatever if i didn't tell dan that one of our mates bands had a record coming out i don't think he'd know you know because he just he, he does his own thing which is why i actually adore him but um yeah he he was you know very sort of um he, he's been building his own sort of uh, repertoire and, you know, in, in dance music and, and um, yeah, he, he brought that element in and, uh, and at the same time, you know, there were sides of the band, like there's a song on a record called Sucker Punch, which is a song Max and I have been working on. Uh, and we, we were literally, I think, two, two days away from flying to Thailand and uh, Dan Austin was like, yeah, we've got anything else. We've got any other songs because at the moment we're going to Thailand for five weeks and we've got six ideas that we're all really happy with. Because some of the songs we wrote whilst we were in Thailand, um, just, you know, on the whim. But um, yeah, Sucker Punch was this song where I just had this riff the whole time. And, uh, and I just said to them, I was like, I think 
this will be a fun one to do because it's a, a marriage of where some of us are at with rock music and where some of us are at with dance music and how we can sort of blend those two together whilst making it feel honest and not like it's something we just try to stitch together for the sake of doing something different. It's just, it's just organically, this is where uh, as songwriters we've gone. And, um, but then at the same time, like Sucker Punch, I would say is a dancey song in that sense, but it's also one of the heaviest songs on the record in terms of, you know, it's just, yeah, it just goes. So, um, yeah, it was a lot of fun to put together, man. It was really a lot of fun together. And I, I don't I don't understand why why when us five get together, this is the stuff we do, but it's just what we do. So there was no conscious com- like conversation between us about, um, you know, bringing certain elements in deliberately. It would just be like, woke up today, this is the song I wrote, should we record it tonight? Yes or no, sort of thing. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the title track, though, because that is, yeah, like you say, it's arguably the heaviest one on there. That riff is big, man. When we do get back to these live shows, oh my God, that is going to be a big, big moment right there. And it strikes me as interesting as well that you picked that as the title for the album as a whole, because I think as a track, kind of the biggest summation of what you guys are trying to do there musically. Um, But also... Yeah, the record's a punch in the face, man, in a good way. It really hits you about, right? Yeah, dude. And I feel like also, like, we, you know, as I said, there's a few of us that kind of went through, like, a metaphorical sucker punch, you know, in terms of what we were going through in life. And it was just, like, I don't know. I, just, I remember, like, throwing the title out there. And we always do this thing where, like, we latch onto one idea, early doors. And if nobody comes up with anything better, we just leave it. We did the same with our band name. You know, we came up, we 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 came up with a using you meet six is like a what would you what, I don't know what the right phrase to say it would be my brain's gone gone dead but you know um, we needed a name for a flyer so it's like oh let's just do uh, that phrase we use you meet six when we're meeting up to go out we should have changed that we should have changed that but we didn't cut anything better so we just left it alone um but it yeah out. it worked out it, it worked on. out it did all right but yeah i mean there's songs on there like i think nice to me is another big one that i think you know there's a the mid late on that is like kind of we just we just tried to bring in anything that we'd done before we were like okay if we're gonna have anything that feels familiar it needs to be familiar but a level up or with a twist and if we're doing something completely different again we need to still morph that into something that feels lot not like a complete like uh shock and like a completely different band or different identity so i think there was without even trying to have compromise there was because we we all collectively wanted to make sure that if we were throwing stuff into the pot that it all made sense you know so um but yeah it is it is it's a it's a lot it's a we basically took we took at what we did on the eye and went, okay, that worked. That felt good. That was kind of cool. But I remember when we, even when we, even when we put out VI, we're like, what is our, what's like our live song on this record? Like what's the song that like gets people going crazy and fucking having a good time and jumping up and down. We were like, we didn't really feel like we had too many of them on that record. So with that in mind, when we came into making, make me feel live, I think was one of the first songs we wrote and we wrote it like, it, we would have we would have written that song before last time we sat down at 2000 Trees, I think it was. Oh, wow. Really? Um, so we, that was in May 2019. Yeah, yeah, it was around May, June or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and we'd, we'd done that song. I remember being like, I like that song. So I, and we wanted to play it at 2000 Trees. We were just like, let's just play it. Let's play it across the whole summer. Um, and I imagine like, you yeah, haven't recorded it yet, so maybe don't start playing live songs, But um, which is a fair point. But again, it was like, we would, you know, Beautiful Way, again, we're thinking about like, how do we, we want to have our fans like to have like those big live moments from a new record because I think there is that affiliation for from a fan's perspective of the way that a song makes them feel when they're in their room on their own or on through their headphones and that relationship they have with that song when they hear it live. And if it's one of those things that when they look around, everyone else is feeling the exact same and doing the exact same thing in a good way, like going fucking crazy then it, that's going to be their relationship to that song. And I think that was such a, that was such the forefront of what we were trying to do and try to achieve that, yeah, our fans and both old and new and how we want them to sort of digest and interpret this record 
was was live led it was how is this record going to come across live like if we stood in front of it and just jammed it what would happen so yeah. i think that's why there's so much energy on the record you know um a few tender moments but other than that it's all pretty much in your face yeah it's so funny that you say that as well because i remember actually with gunnersville as well when you did that gig because of course you did singles uh but in in order from you know start to end like you know furthest away to most recent so you're finishing on what was just out then which is what's it like yeah the place went fucking nuts like like more so arguably than some of your biggest hits when they rolled out the place absolutely exploded for that particular song that's got to felt great knowing that you were aiming for a record that's going to come across in that way live right yeah, I think the thing is like, is that we were playing, we were blind playing that song to people. We weren't playing it with my vocal on it. We were just playing the music. And I remember the amount of our friends that we showed that song to at like parties or whatever, just been like, what do you think of this? They're like, oh, what's this? This is stinky. And it was just that, that thing that we're like, okay. And especially when you go to like your friend's younger siblings, you know, like, I don't want to say our target audience necessarily, but people, you know, that are, the people that latch onto music earlier so are those that are predominantly a bit younger and like they were like don't know who this is but i love it and so we all started to think that and, it, and it's, it was the same reaction everyone was moving around you know and um and wanting to wanting to do something with their arms always or whatever so i was just like okay this could be it and i i mean that i remember coming on stage at gunnersville and i was just like it's ex- just exhausted but i remember the first thing i said I think to my dad as we were walking off the stage, he was just like, he's like, I wasn't expecting that for, for what's it like. I was like, nor was I, but I'm glad it's gone that way. And even with Reading in terms of like, we only put it out on, I think the Thursday or the Friday before the Reading and Leeds weekend. And like, we played that song on the set. And as you said, arguably that weekend, I thought we're getting more people jumping up and down in the pit than we are for this. And, you know, songs that have been on the radio or whatever. So yeah, I think it's, um, it's def- as it was definitely something that there was a motivation to have a record that got people up. And uh, I feel like 2021 is going to need something to kickstart it. And I hope Sucker Punch can, can play a role in doing that. So, yeah. yeah, absolutely, man. And let's dive into what people have heard now at the time of kind of recording, because uh, only just last week or so was uh, Beautiful Ways come out, which again, I think sets the tone really, really well. I can see why that's an early single. It, it really sets the tone of what's to come with the record as a whole. A big, big old emo chorus there as well. That's an emo <laughs> chorus lyric and a half, isn't it? Talk to you about coming up with that hook. What, we're fucked up in a beautiful way? I mean, the perfect emo line right there. Oh, there you go. You know me, mate. Emo pappy over here. Um, no, I feel like, dude, I told, I told you, I told you that we were, we were going we to make a record that was going to be indicative of what, people have enjoyed Yumi 64 before but you know in 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 you know 2020 and it was like I know when we were making this song and um me and Max had come out of the studio we like did a writing session somewhere and like with one of our friends and we came out and I was like man the song's cool but it doesn't say anything like it doesn't say anything at all and he was like well let's go back in and, and have a look at it I was like nah like it needs to be I want it to be anthemic and chanty and like duh duh Da, 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 da. like I want people to be able to like sing it in someone's face and then I was like and I want it to be like a celebration of people that either feel overlooked or misunderstood or misrepresented but then they're, they're celebrating that and I love the idea of like saying we're all fucked up but how beautiful is it and that was kind of as soon as we had that tagline I was like okay cool then I'm at the time, what, 29 years of age, and I'm feeling like this song is speaking to me as a 29 year old who should have this shit more figured out. It's gonna, it's gonna resonate with our fans. They're gonna feel the same way about it. And yeah, it is, it's, that song is almost like a call to arms, you know, like in the best way possible of just like complete liberation and, you know, um, that only you can judge yourself in in your best and your worst moments and that's really what that song is about and uh you know obviously it comes with it it also you know um looks at the relationship between you know having loved and lost and then how that how that is kind of relative to you know how you feel on a hangover or in that sense a come down i guess of something or come down has come down something great and then not having it there's always that lull after it and um yeah, so 
I don't know. I just, I, I, I was pretty sure that it would go down well because us five who are like the biggest U Music fans in the world, because we've been to all their shows um, and bought all their albums. Uh, I kind of knew that if us five all really loved it, then there was a chance that the other fans, not the be- not the biggest fans, but the other fans of U Music might enjoy it. So uh, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad to see that people have resonated with it, man. And um, yeah, good vibes, buzzing. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's funny you say about, uh, you know, there's, there's been a lot of talk, it was, we've already said, you know, you guys were in kind of interesting places personally and kind of figuring a lot of stuff out. You've said that in the statement that's come out that you were, uh, I think the quote was, in pursuit of happiness when you guys were making this record. I guess my question there is, how did all you guys being in that mindset, how did it fuel the record? Did it, did it light a fire under you, kind of being in, in a, a place you maybe didn't want to be? How did that actually push you guys into making what's become Sucker Punch? I feel like it was all about like flipping our perspective on things. And I think a lot of what life has taught me so far is that the best thing you can do is accept the situation and have acceptance for a situation, both good and bad. Um, and you know, you, something awful can be, can be happening to you or, you know, we were talking a lot when making this record about finding something beautiful in like a really bad moment. And I think that for us, as I said, the, the, the jump of this interview that, you know, um, we write our best stuff when, we're in a bad place. And uh, I don't know if that's because that's us being, that's when we're at our most honest. I don't know, but I feel like that's when we're at our most potent as songwriters. Um, and for me, for what I'm trying to say, and yeah, I think there was a collective ambition to completely unplug ourselves from the real world, which we did. Um, and also, you know, it's, it's pretty difficult to not have, uh, a positive outlook on on life when you know you're in this utopia in a sense you know like where karma is the studio it's in the it's in the middle of like a small fishing village in called bang Shire and i don't know somewhere like three hours from Bangor. i have no idea where the fuck it is but it was uh it was a hell of a job getting there once you were there it was just like you're just in a fishing village that's it it's you the boys you i think we went once to Batoya maybe once, maybe once or twice for like a night out. But I mean, you know, that, that didn't have too much of an effect on the record, but the rest of the time it was just living and breathing the record. And um, just, I was just so determined. And I think we all were just so determined to make sure that um, we did, we left nothing sort of there, you know, everything had to be put into that record. There was, I had no interest in anything other at that time than making the best u six record possible. Um, and so what's been, you know, really kind of rewarding is so far as is getting feedback that, you know, that there's a feeling that we've done that, um, whether or not, obviously the fans are, will have to decide whether it's the best record we've ever done. But from, um, from our perspective, it's definitely the record we believe is the record we've been trying to make for a while. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I'm really, I'm not even most of the time over the years, you probably would have got responses from me like, um, oh, I'm a bit nervous about what people are going to think. I'm not nervous about this record. I know people are going to love it. I know they're going to enjoy it because there's, it's, it's, um, there's nothing about it that isn't just a hundred percent and a hundred percent real. And I think, you know, that's the most important thing you can do. So if anything, I'm just excited and I just, you know, people that, that will uh, hopefully will inhabit in the way that we want them to, which is completely, completely is the only way to say it really complete inhabit. So, yeah. Yeah, it's exciting, man. Exciting for people to hear it for sure. It's no, it's a very exciting few months ahead, I think, with you guys. And uh, let's look forward as well, because like you say, written to be played live, this record, it really is. Yeah. Tour's been announced. Please, God, let it happen. I've said this with everyone announcing tours. I mean, who knows what the hell situation we're going to be in, but let's be hopeful. Let's be positive. Really? I take it you must have already been thinking about set lists, about staging. You must be dying to get out there on the stages. Have you thought about how this tour is actually going to play out? I wrote, I, I can actually tell you when I, I wrote a, a set list, I'm going to look now for you. Brilliant. I can tell you, okay, I wrote a set list, which I sent to all the lads back on the, the 21st of April. Brilliant. That's great. That's planning ahead. That is proper and, planning. 
that's how that's how much I'm thinking about this. Like I'm, I can't even begin to properly articulate how how much it means to not only us, but I'm fully aware of every other musician in the world at any level. It doesn't matter who, whether you're, you know, you're playing to just your five mates at, at your local venue or you're playing the O2 arena, it's really redundant. Like live music is just so integral to, to all of us on so many different levels. And um, yeah, um, I think about it quite a lot. I think about how much I will never complain about being tired on tour again. And if I'm tired, I'm gonna have a really cold shower and just get on with it. Uh, because it's such a, we have such a, we're like ordinary people that just have the most extraordinary life. And I think that um, it's just something that means everything. So I think, you know, for the fans as well as the, uh, trust me when I say to, to anybody that watches this, that, that your favorite band is craving it just as much as you are. And I wish I could go to every single artist's first show back because I just think it's going to be pandemonium every night and all over the world. I think it's going to be a beautiful thing. And, yeah, I hope that obviously when it's safe to do so that uh, we can we can get it. I think I'm I'm optimistic for 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 our May tour uh, fundamentally because I think if it doesn't happen, then that means that we're not at a place to be having festivals either. And if we don't have festivals and we don't have live music starting late spring, early summer, we're all fucked. Like it's it's done. Uh, and that's not to be like doom and gloom on a, you know, on a heavy level. But I just, I don't see how the music industry, our live music industry will survive it, especially with um, matey boys over in Westminster doing absolutely nothing about it. So it's like, you know, obviously within their control, they can do more, but, you know, nobody can control the spread of a virus and how it flares up or whatever. But we need, everybody needs to get back to doing this for so many reasons but one is that if we don't that I'm really worried about the next generation of of artists and what they're walking into you know so I'm fingers crossed I think I, I say a little thing in the mirror every day I hope this happens so yeah fingers crossed it happens man yeah I'm hopeful too I am hopeful I think you've got to remain hopeful and positive even when it's incredibly tough at the minute as you say but fingers fingers crossed please God early 2021 let's have it um I will leave you with this, man, which is a question that kind of seems a bit weird when the album isn't even out yet. But as we all know, everyone's at home and everyone's spending that time really writing some new stuff. You working on anything, mate? Yeah, dude, I'm in the studio like every day at the moment with just every day. Uh, with the lads, with other other dudes and bands, other ladies and bands, and just sort of working on anything and everything, really. I think it's... um. You have to be, you have to be keeping, keeping that fire lit. And we've already spoken about, um, look, on, honestly, and like, I don't think it, this isn't to go against all the work that people are doing behind the scenes for our band. But if it was up to me, I think if it was up to us, really, the record would be out already. Like we just put it up now, but so many people are working so hard on different, in different ways to give it, you know, the amount of time for, pre-orders and different singles to warm everything up and all that sort of stuff so i get it i get the process but i'm already like i already feel like this record came we finished making this record in november 2019 and it's what are we today almost october 2020 it's almost been a year so it's like i i, I already have so many more things that I need to say and that I need the world to hear through you, me at six and otherwise. So yeah, we're a hundred percent working on new stuff. We'll be back in the studio. I think like all together properly in the next few weeks, making new music. Um, but what, what I don't want is to spend too much time uh, bringing that to life. Cause I feel like before that all happens, sucker punch needs to be all of you, me at sixes, uh, you, me at six fans, like focus you know like I think that record will uh we're not going to like have the record kind of jamming and try and have new music out a week later you know because I want people to really like live with this record and enjoy it but as you say like every art every artist in the world right now should be making music because if you can't make music right now um usually usually the excuse is we're on the road we have all the time we can't get into the studio or got nothing to write about or whatever 
that's why I went through the thing of even just if I'm writing poems, you know, like just putting some thoughts down on paper is important. So yeah, we'll, we'll once, once the record comes out in January, I'm pretty confident there'll be new music coming out regularly. So yeah. Yeah. Exciting really stuff. Exciting. Like you say, got to, got to keep creative and got to, you know, just kind of use this time as best you can when it's handed to us, yeah. even if it's handed to us for awful reasons, got to use the best we can. In the meantime, the man, I mean it, this record's fucking great and it's really, really big. And I was very, very pleased when that dropped in my inbox the other day. It's excellent, man. <laughs> Particularly the title track. I'm looking forward to that live, man. I really, really am. Um, but in the meantime, mate, just all the best to you, all the best to you boys. And we will catch up with you very soon, I'm sure. Hell yeah, dude. Take care, so thanks for your time.